Hello everyone, in this video we're going to start to talk about multiprocessing and how to make use of the multiple cores that are available on the Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, if you've been using a Raspberry Pi or if you've been following along with some of my videos, uh, the original Raspberry Pi, the A and the B and the B+, uh, they all have a single core, which means that the uh, there's a the, the processor can execute one ex instruction at a time. Uh, by When we talk about multi-core processors, it allows us to have the potential to execute more than one instruction simultaneously. Uh, and the Raspberry Pi 2 has four cores, uh, so we can uh, potentially uh, execute four separate instruction sets simultaneously on Raspberry Pi 2. Um, and one of the things that we, uh, or one of the things that are, that's used at, the, at a very low level to create a new process that can then be run on another core is the fork function. And we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, in this video. Okay, here we have a short program that's going to demonstrate how to create a new process with the fork function. And first thing we're going to do is import a few libraries and these are going to uh, help us to just, just figure out what's going on in the program when it runs. Um, first, uh, first line that it's in the main function uh, is going to print the process ID of the parent to the screen. Uh, and at this point in the program, there's just one process running and that will, will uh, become the parent process for the new process. On the next line, we have we actually use the fork function, and the fork function does a few things. First of all, it creates the new process, and it creates the the new process with a uh, with the stack and the data and the the heap of the uh, of the program up to that point in execution. So it creates a copy of all that stuff uh, in the new process. And in, in a different place in memory, and uh, so it's uh, it, it's it's not quite, but it's pretty close to a copy of the program running in a different spot in memory. Uh, the other thing it does is it uh, returns a value, and uh, the value it returns uh, depends upon which process it's it's returning from. So. Uh, if we are in the parent process, this fork function is going to return the process ID of the child that was just created. If we are in the child process, the fork function is going to return a zero. And so that's how we'll be able to identify later uh, whether we are in the child or we're in the parent. Um, if there's an error in creating that new process, fork will return a negative one. And so we're going to assign that value to PID here. Um, and on this next line here, we're just going to print that PID variable to the screen. So you can you can see what's happening. You'll see the different uh, values PID will have at this point in the program, depending on which process we're in. Um, next, we're going to use a switch case uh, type uh, arrangement here. Uh, to to branch the program depending on what that PID value is which again tells us whether we had an error or we're in a child process or we're in the parent process. So negative one means we had an error and in this case uh, we're just going to print error to the screen and then break. Um, we could uh, uh, choose to do something else there but uh, this is a, just a real simple example. Uh, and when it's zero, remember zero means we're in a child process, so it'll print here. Uh, we are in the child process, and it gives the process ID. Uh, now this process ID that prints right here uh, should be exactly the same as what is printed up here when we're in the parent process. So here we're in a child process, and we're going to report it's the child is going to report its, its own process ID. And here we're up here, when we're in the parent process, it'll print the child's uh, process ID. If, and 
the, the default for this is if it's not minus one and it's not zero, then it must be the parent process. And then we go ahead and we just print that to the screen. We get the process ID. And right here, this process, when this prints uh, to the screen, it should be the exact same value as what is print up here. And just to demonstrate that, we'll go ahead and compile and go ahead and build. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and run it. And there you go. We have, uh, let me bring this over to the side here. And it ran so fast, uh, you didn't get to see uh, what happened over here. Maybe if you play it again, maybe you'll see it pop up real quick, but uh, uh, I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, I'll have that up there for a future video and uh, you'll get to see, uh, see it pop up. <clears throat> okay, so uh, just, uh, just like I said, uh, from the main process, uh, you have the ID of 3975 and that's printed from right here and at this point in the program there's only one process and it's the parent. Uh, next next thing that shows up over here is when we print this line and you can see uh, in this case it's printing 3976 it's one more than 3975 uh, this means uh, that we must be in the parent process at this point and of course here it's very apparent that uh, we are in the parent process and the parent process ID is 3975 just like up here as I said uh, and so you can see that the operating system scheduler uh, executed the, the parent process before it executed the child process and there are some ways we can affect that later on but that's a, that's a future video um, so down here uh, we have PID equals zero and so what and so that means we are executing this line right here but this time we're executing it in the child process and remember up here PID got assigned to zero in the child process so this line right here is coming from the child process and this line is very clear it's coming from the child process and it prints its process ID to the screen and you can see that the process ID of the child here matches uh, what was reported up here from the parent process because remember when the parent process uh, creates this new process, uh, this uh, PID gets assigned the process ID of the child process that was just created. Uh, can I say process a few more times? Okay, and that's about it for the fork function. Uh, and that's how we create a new process in a Linux operating system, which is the operating system that's used on Raspberry Pi. And uh, and in a future video, we will talk a little bit about how we can share some data back and forth between these processes and, uh, and a few other things. We'll also get into threads. Uh, threads are maybe a, a, a little easier implementation of parallel processing. And, uh, and there's some advantages and disadvantages of uh, the fork versus, versus a thread. And we'll talk about those uh, in a future video. So I hope you like this one. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, like it if you like it. And uh, please share it. Or it helps me out a lot. So uh, thank you. And we'll talk again real soon.